Stuart, welcome. Thanks, Nick. It's an honor. Yeah, no, good to see you. Um, let me ask you about your early going because um, uh, you started out, obviously you, you found your way to Annapolis. Where were you before that? Where'd you, where'd you grow up? Just a kid growing up uh, outside of Boston. Yeah. And did you always want to be a pilot? For a fairly young age, my dad bought me all these uh, books on... He was a Marine in the Pacific, and so um, okay. he bought me all these books on like, the greatest fighter stories of World War II. And so, yeah, as a kid, I had all the models hanging from my ceiling. And oh, wow. I know it sounds weird, but yes. No, so I didn't. I <laughs> and then, uh, and you did that for a while? You did, did you think about staying in the Navy, or did you just... just uh... And that's a great question. I, I just had... Um, I just had other things I wanted to do. I remember I was first stationed in Sigonella, Sicily, and I saw a Flying Tiger 747 come through, and I was a Navy pilot flying out to the carrier, and I saw that Flying Tiger 747. They had a storied history, you know, and I saw that, and I said, that just looks really cool. And the airlines were hiring, you know, in the yeah. 80s, so I, just, I was yeah. just lucky. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and, um, and so you did that for a while, and then you uh, found a new... A new passion that combined, I guess, some stuff you learned. I I'm trying to make the connection. You know, just some stuff you learned as a pilot. Obviously, you're always kind of troubleshooting and uh, surveying your domain and imagining how the technology might land safely and all that stuff. Yes, sir. Well, I, I, I think more. So I, so I was an aerospace engineering major. And, you know, if you're mechanical, okay. electrical, yeah. engineering teaches you these basic principles. Yeah. And I think just as importantly as a kid, around age 15, I started wrenching on cars. My first car was a Mopar. It was a 340 Cuda. Classic, you know, classic car. Yeah, Mopars. <laughs> yeah, right on, man. And so, is that uh, yeah. sort of like drum sounds? First, Do we need to learn what that is? Yeah. 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 Her, uh, so, to, yeah, car to 750 thermal quad, Hurst pistol grip. Four speed. This guy knows all that. Okay. So, so I think that was just his. Yeah. So it's just That's very nerdy stuff. Yeah. It is. It's really fun. And so it's just tinkering with machines. Yeah. It's really understanding machines. Yeah. yeah. And so now you're in a situation where we we find ourselves um, faced with an existential crisis that we've all been aware of, and we know it's coming. We know, right. we know the situation, which is that uh, climate chaos is upon us and that CO2 in the atmosphere is a contributor and that human activity is the source and uh, we have an opportunity to do something about it. Yes, we sure but do. But most people know that but don't know what to do. Yeah, we knew it back, remember 1988, Jim, Jim Hansen got up in front of Congress, asked us to go to wartime footing then and that was yeah. like a billion years ago, you know, in terms of how technology moves, we've doubled our CO2 emissions since then. So yes, right? So, um, so everybody knows, for example, that um, by driving less and by, um, you know, electrifying, we're going to reduce our carbon footprint. Exactly. And that's, that's us. So, so our relatively new 501c3 is, is Go Electric Colorado. And specifically, our website is goelectriccolor.org, colorado.org. And we're a small group of volunteers. Yeah. No money, no pay. And we help try to make, uh, I'm going to quote the Block Power uh, CEO, Block Power is that company out of Brooklyn, New York. They're electrifying, trying to electrify all of Ithaca, New York right now. They were made the headlines for a few years. And the CEO's great quote was, we're going to try to make your house into a Tesla. So our specialty is, is residential, um, electri beneficial electrification. Yeah. And, and for a lot of people, that's unaffordable or that seems daunting. Mm -hmm. And also there's the, the moving target of federal subsidies or grants or whatever and, and, and utility co companies that offer rebates. And so, so do you help people make sense of all of that stuff? And, Absolutely. Cool. And yeah. think about like the first step. Yeah, the first step is you go on our web, our little nascent website, go down the bottom, and you click, and you schedule yourself for a one-hour consult. Oh, wow. Well, we somebody... didn't know how that was going to work out, but they are wildly successful. In one hour, I can just teach you a ton of stuff. Wow. Get you headed off in a great direction. And yeah, you can't afford everything right away. You're a real person in real life. We'll talk you know, with you know, the first piece of equipment, and then we give you phone numbers and our emails, and these processes you know, can play out over years. Yeah. 13 years in my house, I'm still tweaking it, still doing stuff to it. Yeah. Is your house mostly so, electric now? That's, yeah, it's, it's state-of-the-art all electric. It's a showcase. It uses a fifth of the energy of the most efficient gas home, on and on and on. Um, there's another member of our team out here in the audience. I won't name him. He likewise has a house like that. And you're invited to our house anytime. We open our yeah. doors all the time to people who want to see this equipment, see it work. How noisy is it? Yeah. On and on. Yeah. 
this building has, is carbon neutral. Doesn't there's no natural gas it's coming into this example. building. Yeah. But um, it was a big production, and it was a lot of money to try to put up 56 kilowatts of photovoltaic panels, and you know redo uh, heat pumps for the entire building, and all new lighting and all that stuff. Big commitment. Yes. Not everybody can do that. No. So where do they start? Do you start with uh, the hot water heater? Do you start with a car? Where do you start? Yeah, great question. So we can start if you're budget constrained. We'll send you to places where you can check out rebates. You know, and we we're team with Energy Smart, which is Boulder County's energy yeah. entity. Uh, we actually work with and for them. We help draft their their documents for them. They like us and trust us so much. So we'll send you to them for the latest on rebates. We're, we're kind of tech nerds. But we can talk at any level of technical competency, and we'll start you up with the low-hanging fruit like air sealing and insulation. I know that sounds we were that's like '70s talk. We were talking that back in the Carter administration, remember? Right. And that's Put our still, sweaters on and still, insulate the house. Still yeah. the most important thing, yeah. and and we've gotten better at it. We have better materials, so we'll talk into that first. You mentioned water heater. Water heater is another low-hanging fruit. The new heat pump water heaters are, and I'm not exaggerating because I had one of the first ones in Boulder. I've been taking data on it for five or six years now, and they are between 500 and 1,000% more efficient than the most efficient gas hot water heaters. So this new stuff that we're trying to talk you into, these are like starships. None of this 10 or 15%, we don't have time for that anymore. We gotta make quantum leaps yeah. when we do things. So, so these simple water heaters do that for you. That's cool. Yeah, that's just one piece of equipment. And a lot of people talk about heat pumps. Right, and that's what this building's being cooled yeah. by now. Yeah, they're incredible. Uh, three to four times more efficient than the most efficient gas uh, device. And that gets better, too, as we clean up the grid, because that three to four times more efficient is based on the average grid, which can include coal plants, gas plants. We fully electrify the grid. Now Now that's hyper-efficient. You, know, yeah. you can't do that with a gas device. So, so um, what if I'm somebody who, um, like you, is attached to my gas-powered car, at least the way you used to be? Yeah. They're um, still cool. Yeah, they're still cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. But the goal, I guess, is just to drive it less, right? Drive. Great question. Great question. I think I was to, before the show we were talking about. Um, we I did one con, and we do in person consults too. So besides an hour virtual hour, we can, uh, uh, virtual on online, we can go to your house, look at your house. Those often stretch to three hours. We go every little over every little molecule in your house. So I was walking out of a house I did in Denver almost two years ago, and it was a Subaru in the driveway. And I said, uh, "How much do you drive that?" She said, "A thousand miles a year." I e-bike and I take the bus. I said, don't ever sell that Subaru. Because, you know, it's a waste because e uh, EVs embody a lot of energy too. If you're the average 30 a mile a day driver in the U.S., yes, get rid of the gas car. But there's a lot in between, a little gray area if you're not driving that yeah. much. Just keep your gas car. And, uh, and what's, what does it cost for the service you're providing if you, you have a consult on the phone or you go to somebody's house? Free. It's, free. It's, yeah, it's, wow. it's, it's free. We're really passionate about it. Um, uh, we see the end of the world coming too. Um, and, and, you know, in my, in my previous profession, uh, when that's happening, you just, you know, get all screamy, you don't get all panicky, you just work the problem until, my favorite phrase is, until ground impact, you know. And because there's that, it's like, you know, Starship, you know, the Star Trek episodes, you, you see a Star Trek episode and, and Spock will go, Captain, there's a 2% probability we're going to make it, right? And they always make it because it's Star Trek and they got to have a new episode. So, um, yeah, it's kind of that, it's that kind of thinking, you know, it's yeah. better, better to do that than just give up right? yeah yeah well and we are wildly successful make no doubt we every time every house we do we take it's tons of carbon per year we take offline yeah uh, the original concept was direct action we just heard from a client went from gas to heat pump you know and he compared his two he went from a huge amount of gas to like no gas and even if you factor in the energy consumption from the heat pump he's wildly ahead yeah so we're doing that for hundreds of homes that's really cool and now um so two questions. Number one, is this replicable? Can other states, other places, Absolutely. other communities learn from you, look at your website, figure out um, what they might be able to do in their, in their homes and hometowns to, to just expand the work you've done? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Uh, I think we're talking informally to some people in Oregon now. We just had a consult with three people in New Mexico. I think Massachusetts is far ahead of us. So we caught an article over a year ago. I think there's about 14 entities like us. 14 Go Electric Colorados, they're, they're in Massachusetts. So it, it's hard for us to do that right now because we need more volunteers. Uh, we only have so many people. And mm -hmm. speaking for myself and the other gentlemen in the audience, as part of the coach, we're the residential coaches like myself that were technically apt. We're just heads down trying to electrify homes all the time. It's hard for us to step out of that and, hey, let's go call it Massachusetts. Yeah. But as our team grows, we have some amazing administrative talent now. 
uh, we're getting better at that, and we're doing more of that. We're trying to reach other people. That's really cool. And the uh, website is what? GoElectricColorado.org. GoElectricColorado.org. Right, two C's in the middle. It's fully spelled. All words fully spelled. And um, go on our website. It's simple. It's embarrassingly simple. But you get to the bottom, and you can click that all-important sign-up, and then Calendly will schedule you automatically with somebody like me yeah. or the other person. You know, there's about five or six of us on. We originally called ourselves the tech team. We're call ourselves uh, coaches now. It's friendlier yeah. and warmer. It's incredibly... Uh... <laughs> hug you. We're going to hug you, too, at the same time. Free hugs. I just made that up. No. <laughs> I, um, We're just cold technocrats. Yeah, no, I, I love the fact that... Well, you've gone from being the guy who had one of the largest carbon footprints in the world to the guy who's ali- ha- helping helping uh, houses de- decarbon themselves. Yes, sir. It's and amazing. that's a... I will defend a FedEx aircraft, though, because we generate a FedEx aircraft that generates 10 to 20 times the revenue of a single passenger flight. Well, and when we move stuff, it's really valuable. So yeah. we pay for our, our carbon footprint. Yeah. No, I'm not trying I, to make you no, feel I bad. No, I get you. I always, I, always, <laughs> no, I always think about that. It's like, man, I was bringing a ton of yeah. kerosene before. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, the truth I is, that. You know, you're, you're, you're filling in a, a really important gap here, which is... There's the willingness, there's the openness, there's the yes. knowledge, there's some information, right. but there's just the difficulty in starting. There is. And you're helping people figure out where to start, and that's incredibly valuable. Well, thanks. Yeah, direct action. Yeah. It's just direct action. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thanks, thanks. for being on the show. Stuart Cummings from Go Electric Colorado. Thanks, man. GoElectricColorado.org. <laughs>